Hello everyone and welcome to Mashinki and the first episode of my coverage of this game. Now Mashinki may not be a name that's unfamiliar with you, especially if you travel in transportation tycoon circles. This is a game that has been on a lot of people's radars for quite some time. Now before we jump into it, just be aware that this is available on Steam and it is in early access. It's still in a fairly early stage of development, but what is there is quite enjoyable and quite playable. Now, for the majority of its development cycle of seven years so far, it was a game developed by a single individual. I'm not sure if that is still the case. The development team may have grown a little bit very recently. Things that are not in the game yet, multiplayer, but there will be a multiplayer. Also, the ability to take over your trains and drive them yourself. Um, some loose ends and some icons and that sort of thing. The final game will include all of these wonderful things. Pour your eyes over them and actually don't do that because it would require removing them and then liquefying. Don't just look at them and read them and be excited. Now, as ever, better to show than to describe. So we're going to jump straight into a game and that is going to require us making a game. Now, currently the game only has three different sizes of maps. Um... For the sake of a, a quick series, I think the middle ground would be a good place to start. This is one of those games where there's really not particularly an end goal, much like Transportation Tycoon and the open source version of that game, Open Transportation Tycoon Deluxe, uh, where you just keep playing until you don't want to play anymore, until your map is so developed that you want to start afresh and, and with the challenges that go with starting afresh. So we'll see how long this series goes on for. But there's a couple of things that I'm going to be playing with. Now, I like there being a bit of a challenge. If you go with low density, these all of these settings, they, they either have two settings or three settings. Low, high, uh, actually I think maybe all of them have three. Yeah, low, medium, and high. And they have quite drastic effect on the game. Low density, you will have... Well, they're, they're ba barely slopes, honestly. It's just, uh, it's not perfectly flat. Uh, medium density, you're going to have a couple of hills, and you might want to tunnel through them, but in many cases, you can probably find uh, an area where the, the hill is fairly narrow, and you'll just flatten that terrain at no particularly large cost. Whereas with high density, you're going to be dealing with incredibly tall mountains, and tunnels will be a way of life for you. Now, this makes the game a lot more interesting, because you have to be more thoughtful with your train routes. Um, forests, this specifically ref references the lumber industries, so low density for that, and generally I prefer low density on most points of interest where you're going to have stations. It makes for a more, again, a more thoughtful game. Your, your stations are going to be further apart from each other, and you're going to have more track to lay and more interesting things going on. Um, We'll go for medium density on towns, though. I do like having more towns. It's definitely on industries. I think it makes sense to have less of them. Um, as far as lakes, honestly, this is the one that I have less of a personal feeling about. But we're going to leave it bang smack in the middle because of that reason. I, I don't particularly feel strongly either way. But with that, we're going to generate our new map. Okay, here we go on our new map. Now, the way the game is going to work early stages is it will give us a tutorial, and it does this every time you open a map, and honestly, there's no particular reason not to go through the tutorial because it does set you up with a bit of cash and a starting viable train route to make more. But understand that cash is the, really the only resource in this game, unlike Transportation Tycoon, where realistically, money is the only thing that you're focused on. In this game, you're going to be moving um, freight, passengers, that sort of thing around, but you're not only going to be spending money to set up your lines. You will actually need what's called tokens. And right now, we're going to have money tokens. It's, it's a bit of an interesting thing. It, it almost feels like this was once envisioned to be some sort of board game. It, it's quite, quite interesting. Now, the, the focus of the game is, as, as you might guess from the games that I've been uh, likening it to, the the transport of goods generally by trains at the moment though perhaps in the future additional forms of transport as well such as uh, road vehicles air vehicles and 
uh, waterborne vehicles. Now, the first one we're going to do is just super easy. We'll we'll click on that and I'll gain 10 cash. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it seems that each of these tokens actually represents a fairly decent amount. Now we go through the basic camera controls. There we go. Middle mouse button to turn around. Wasset to move around. There we go. Well done. In Machinki, you can collect various tokens such as money, wood, coal, iron, and more. Each time you progress to a new era, you'll unlock a new token. And that's probably uh, something to bear in mind. I've played the game very sparingly just to get my handle on the controls. I've not advanced an era, so I don't know how many different types of materials there are. All right, so there we go. Got even more money. Now it wants to show us how to uh, modify the land. Now, this part is really nice. Now, I've moved this quest dialogue across just a little bit so we can have a look at the world. See all these beautiful rolling hills. Very, very nice. Uh, not really photorealistic, but, you know, clearly some effort has been taken to make the textures interesting and uh, a bit more on the realistic side. The moment we press space to enter construction mode, now, this view is going to be exceptionally um, familiar to people who have played games like Open Transportation Tycoon or, in fact, Roller Coaster Tycoon or any of those sorts of games. We have got a very, very familiar map that we can easily see as we're rising or lowering anything, how that's going to affect the game. Now, this is where we'll do most of our building. In fact, most of our time will probably be spent in here. But what we are tasked to do right now is to simply rise or lower some terrain. So I'm going to pick this little part here and then we go. We rose it for a, a few of our money tokens. There we go. And we can collect quite a lot of money tokens instead. Now, first line. Machinki is all about railways. The simplest railway line is between two stations connected with a depot. Railway um, station depot, uh, sorry, track station depot, I guess. Uh, let's start by building a line and transporting passengers between Sunderland. Let's have a look at you right on the edge of the map. A tiny little town. Oh my goodness, there's one person in this town. They live with a little bit of a road in front of them and they've got what, what looks like to all the world to me like a, like a little church uh, that is absolutely absolutely beautiful they're just just living there over, over in the side now what I've seen from the names they're very British centric names like Luton Cardiff Cardiff is the capital city of Wales I've seen Aberystwyth, with Aberdeen Leeds Hollyhead Walsall uh, any others around you of note? I haven't seen Shanfair Puch and Gesko Gerch Gwyn Drobo Shanti Silio Go 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 though, and that did make me quite, quite sad when I, I looked for it in like the first three games. I mean, I was like, come on, you must have put it in there. If you're going to put any Welsh name, like town names in a game about trains, you've got to have that name, but no, there wasn't. Bristol, I, I was quite dejected. Um, however, so, Sunderland to Paisley. Uh, okay. Uh, Paisley, sorry. Paisley. Uh, that's not a uh, bad little trip there, though. Sunderland is such a tiny, diddly little town. Now, the towns do actually grow. Much like uh, other games of this genre, the more... Well, I'm not sure what the conditions are to cause a town to grow, but uh, they will expand over time. Now, I'm going to suspect that that has something to do with economic movement around the town. Either pa passengers to the town, town or away from the town or goods to the town so on and so forth uh, but we're gonna set up a little a railway here and we're gonna more or less follow this because it will give us some cash now typically a railway has only um, a two tile catchment area and frankly we just don't need much of a railway here so there will be fine the, the highlighted blue area was its catchment area now down here hmm, I'm thinking well, this one's only going to have two, but it would reach out to these. But if we got around the back, we might be able to set up a uh, train station. It's, it's kind of six of one and half a dozen the other, really. Uh, I guess we'll set up a little train station right there, and we'll catch quite a few of these towns. We only seem to need to catch a part of a multi-square building to catch the whole building, and then that's quite, quite nice. And this is an incredibly... I mean, it's a simple route to lay, but wow, that, that, that steepness, that, the train isn't going to approve of this. The train is going to be really, really quite unhappy, actually. Uh, nevertheless, let's draw this down. Now, the way that uh, you draw a track in Machinki is you hover over the edge 
and then you draw from that edge so we want to start there and we want to pull down to here so there we go now there's quite a lot of shapes that you can build in here and i i really really do like it i i think the the game has a has a really really nice feel to to laying tracks let's uh, go all the way down and connect them up oh, there we go that is that is, oh my lord are you sure are you sure this isn't like a ski slope Maybe we're, just, we're just ferrying ferrying people up here to Sunderland and then they just ski their way back down I mean that would be awesome but can't we have can't we have something a little bit more like a cable car or something I, I think that would be amazing uh, alas probably not now putting a depot here is going to be tricky this is this is why I like mountains Mountains give you these very, very awkward things to do. And now the reason why this is going to be tricky is because how on earth do I hook it up? Because I don't think we can easily... Well, actually, I think we might be able to... Uh, yeah, see, that's the problem. Oh, no, we can manage it here. Ah, wonderful. But do we really want it there? Now, it's going to try and connect up itself. We could have it there. Uh, yeah, actually, that's not too bad. That is not too bad, because that still leaves us a little bit of room here for something that we will be touching on later in the episode, no doubt, or in a future episode. So, we want to buy ourselves a train. I wonder, can we name these stations? Let me actually have a quick look at that. Can I, can I rename you? Can I, can I name you in any way? Can I do stuff to change your name? No, I cannot. Alas... Alas, I cannot name stations and I cannot... Well, maybe I can name depots uh, eventually. Can I, can I rename locomotive works? No, we can't do that. Oh, well, we'll just follow the tutorial. I would love to be able to name the stations, the depots, and even the trains and the buses and the cars and the everything after after um, viewers. But uh, it doesn't look like we can. I will have a closer look into that, though, later. Now, we can't buy this um, engine because it requires timber. And we have no timber tokens, but we can purchase this with 40 money tokens, and it'll have an operation cost of one money token um, every so often. I'm not actually sure how often that will be. Uh, we've got some interesting statistics here, very useful for us. Now, this is the locomotive's uh, window here. We're going to expand that out a little bit. Operating costs every 15th. I imagine we pay one extra. Or maybe that's every year, because it does say the 15th of December 1920. No, it might just be when it when it was bought. Now, it says what its current weight is and what the maximum recommended weight is. Now, interestingly, we're now going to have to buy some wagons. And this actually tells me to buy more than the recommended operating weight. But that's fine. So one, two, and three. And you'll see there's lots of different options and there's different pros and cons to each one. Now, we are actually operating... See, I really wish I could override you here because I feel this is going to be a very difficult track. Now, on a simple line with just two stops, trains can automatically calculate routes according to the uh, carriages or wagons attached. So, for now, just start the train. It'll take a few seconds to warm up, release the brakes, and move on. Now, that is a really, really interesting point, that on a very basic track, the train will just work out what it needs to do itself. That is very interesting, though uh, probably a bad habit to get into. And for that very reason, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to accept my rewards. We'll have a look in that in a moment. And then I'm probably going to come in here and we are actually going to set up the station. Because frankly, that is just dangerous. We will have first station over there and second station down here. Now, there's more than just stations you can click on. You can actually click on pieces of track or uh, to like set up waypoints. Now, that'll come in very handy later on. And other trains to copy their orders, I should imagine. Uh, let me just have a look. Yeah. We can tell it to skip the current station it's going to. We can remove uh, a station. We can tell it what to do at the stations. Um, stop and turn around. Add this command after a station or waypoint to force the train to turn around. So, for example, perhaps if this station um, continued on the line, I could just tell it stop and move around once it's uh, pulled in and, and done what it needs to do. And that would all be gl glorious. You've no doubt noticed passengers moving from the buildings that this can reach into the station. I like that visualization of it, of it going on. I think that's actually pretty cool. You can have signals. You can tell the train to reverse or go to a depot. I'm not sure if there is actually any need for that. Ah, oh, there we are. It's actually um, checking towards the next operating cost. That's actually pretty cool. We can have a look at some statistics as well. All good 
things. Now, can I actually rename it? Can we, can we name it? I don't really need it. I can I'd love to be able to rename it. Please let me know. <sighs> scallywags. Scallywags. Huge scallywags. Now then, first passengers. This is a unique opportunity for your company. There is virtually no transport infrastructure here. You should take advantage of this. I think the best thing would be to start with transporting passengers. It's cheap. It's a cheap way to make some money and get your company started. Uh, okay, this is my uh, consultant apparently and wants me to move 50 passengers and I'll be rewarded with 100 money tokens. Well, that's going to be a kind of kind of awkward because you picked awful stations to link me up to. The, there's two reasons why this is awful. One, it takes the train an age to get up this hill. Two, when it's on its return journey, it's going to have like almost none of its capacity used up. That's an awful train. Ah, uh, I love mountains. Right, okay, uh, let's have a look. Ooh, we've got a nice little town over here, and that would be a very short little uh, route as well. We've got some nicer towns here as well. Ooh. Oh, you might be nice. You've got quite a lot of passenger availability. I could uh, shuffle them around a lot. You're going to be on your own for a long time. Sorry, but it's true. Uh, we could also possibly hook you guys up, maybe. Uh, we've got a couple of options here. We've definitely got a couple of options. I don't want to leave Paisley to its fate, though. I feel bad for Paisley. I feel Paisley deserves something more. Uh, we could hook up another station here to connect with this one. And at least you'd get a little bit more. I, uh, but it looks awkward. Um, another thing we could do, we could flatten some of this land just to give us a little bit more, more room to move our uh, depot around. And that might be worth doing, honestly. Uh, let's have a... Well... That poor train. You know what? No, I think I think we're just gonna, we're just gonna have to leave this. Uh, that's just gonna have to uh, fight and fend for itself, really. We're gonna go somewhere else. We don't want too overblown of a station, though. I think this one is actually quite nice. It's nice and flat, or rather, it's got good flat options for us. Uh, so yeah, let's set up another station straight away. Now, I would like station to be about this wide, but maybe a little bit more. It's going to be expensive, but uh, we're going to have to lower some of the terrain, too. So let's uh, get to lowering that terrain and a little bit more as well. There we go. There we go. That's uh, a little bit better. I think we'll lower that part as well. There we are. Now, that gives us an option to bring you out. There we are. Perfect. Now, you don't have to make each, each uh, station or station pair um exclusive and in fact you probably shouldn't if you want to have a fun game uh but in this case we we're going to start off with two exclusive um station pairings uh, just for convenience sake if nothing else uh, how much room do we need to be able to turn we kind of need more than that it's a bit of a shame but we'll live with it let's bring that out there now one thing you can do is you can sort of uh, encourage a road to grow in a certain way. And I would very much like that right now. Uh, let's get you down there. Because I would like this place to, to build more houses along this road that I've set up. So that I can uh, profit from it in the future. So it was worth a little bit of uh, expansion on my part to get that to be a reality. There we go. Now... We will have this one, um, yeah, something like that. Oh, no, no, no. I remember now why, why I sunk the railroad back a little bit. There we are. Now we could just go like that. As you can see, quite a nice little uh, building interface for it. And there we go. We've got all we need for another setup. Ooh, let's have a look at that. It's getting on. And we've also got a delivery of logs objective we can play around with the time if we want to i when i'm playing these sorts of games i like to kind of challenge myself never to use the pause button uh, i'm sure i will at some point with this but i prefer the games or at least i find them much more enjoyable if i resist that for as long as i can we can have a little depot uh, right about here if we wanted to but that's going to limit some of our options with um oh wow what on earth are you trying to do again 
I don't know, but it looks like some sort of heresy to me. Uh, let's get the, this up right there. And I'm going to actually branch out this road directly down here, specifically to hook up to a depot. And we'll, uh, it'll be a little bit off the main, the main track. Oop, that does not work. How about from down here? No. It really doesn't like that that angle, but that's fine. We can just have the, the trains stop off in this station first. Uh, later on, I'll have to adjust it, though, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, that's fine. Just pop that one there. There we are. All hooked up. So, station three and four. Once again, we're going to do exactly the same. We could purchase a stronger, uh, a better train right now because we've got some timber. But I think we'll go with exactly the same setup we had last time except i'm going to go with these they're much more expensive to buy uh but don't seem to have any particular um operating costs beyond the initial expense so i'm quite happy with that honestly it's a bit heavier as well of course but it can it can hold over twice as many people it's also a bit longer so we'll go with um well i mean that does give us a reasonable amount there i got three so it's a i think one unit so one two three yeah, we could probably get away with another one but we'll 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 err on the side of caution with this i think uh right so i would like you to head in there and then head in there and that is your your orders and we'll see how that goes let's actually speed up time just a tad just to see how that works oh we've already got our award down there let's go ahead and collect that lots of money now we've got a delivery of logs let me introduce myself i'm jack tamuel lmbr deputy uh, we could fit an extra carriage if we want okay i'll bear that in mind um our company plans to invest in the development of local industry that's why i contacted you first we need to deliver logs to your uh, to our sawmills forests are all around us so you should have no problem finding them if you succeed we will pay you well and we might have more work for you very well now this starts us off in the industrial sort of progression and that's very very useful and from what i've seen of the games i've uh, started they all seem to have that uh quest there but uh they do start to randomize the quests as you get out of the sort of tutorial area now there's a couple of options over there but realistically what we want is we want somewhere where we are going to be able to hook it up to the toolsmith eventually now that would work and we could run them through the mountains that would be expensive to do is there really no lumber yard around here wow Okay, well, I mean, if we're gonna, we could bring this up to the tool works near Bristol, and that might give us a reason to have a tunnel going through here if we were bringing uh, people up from Luton. Um, all right, I like it. So we've got a forest right about here. Uh, I want to hook up to this, but that would be incredibly awkward. It really, really would be very, very difficult for me. That being said, ah, I've got an idea. I've got a bit of an idea. Don't worry, don't panic. It's not a dangerous idea. Well, it's, it is for the mountain, I suppose, but not, not for anything else. Right, we don't need this depot there any longer, and we are simply going to bring this down here. And then we are going to connect up a depot right there. But that does force it to go in that direction. Ooh. <laughs> I approve. There we go. However, since I don't want things to get crazy, I'm going to put some some traffic signals there. Uh, also put one there as well, just to uh, make sure that this train being active on this line isn't sending a signal to this entire line that it cannot be used. Right, okay, so that's kind of fixed that problem. Realistically, well, it's unlikely I'm really going to do anything with that, but we'll, we'll see. That may actually allow us to bring this train down here first. Okay, why didn't I think of that earlier? Uh, because I'm dumb, basically. Right, okay, so we want a station. Now, this one doesn't need to be particularly large. Uh, it would be helpful if it could easily access that one, though. So if we draw this out, again, as long as it partially connects 
or, or captures the industry in its catchment area should work. Uh, down here, much the same. Let's get three of them. And I prefer the stations to be about three uh, long simply because that gives us some options. Is that going to be okay to connect up there? Ah, fantastic. Now, I want those there because if this line becomes complicated, I want signals in front of the station. Now, about connecting up here. Uh, it shouldn't actually be too hard. We can just do this. There we go. It does, it does enforce that coming away from the, the depot, it's going to have to go over there, but that should be fine. Uh, furthermore, I would like a signal just by there so that uh, this this lane doesn't block anything else off marvelous right so now we are going to use our lumber uh sorry our timber we're going to get a much more more powerful engine because we're going to be hauling cargo room freight now we want logs specifically they're reasonably heavy not particularly long though and have a fairly small capacity that's fine so let's go with something hmm, let's go with four let's say the length is 3.82 oh that length is going to be a little bit long uh, it's okay we can extend the the station over on this side without too much problem I want you to go there, and I would like you to full... Oh, that is not what I wanted. Let me remove that. I would like full load, and then I would like you to go over there. And it doesn't matter to you if you fully unload or not. That's all I care for. Go ahead, and let's get you out there. And I should be able to add to the station a little bit there there we go and the same over here thus preserving the signal right at the front there we are perfect let's have a look at this train coming out now there's a couple of things you can do with the train uh, i'm sure many of you may have uh, seen the game transport fever and may have watched me streaming it recently one of the things i enjoyed doing was simply boarding the train and you can do that in this. It's, it's glorious. You can just sit there. You can just sit there as your train takes you along. You can listen to the to the engine ramping up there. And the other thing you can do is you can actually move through the various wagons. I mean, these are cargo wagons, so, uh, you know, there's not a particularly nice view there. But uh, still do it. You can also shoot the horn. Oh, that's fantastic. I approve. I approve enormously. And then you can exit out. But we'll uh, just pull in, and we're going to watch, hopefully these wagons start to fill there we go marvelous looking there we are and if you're on passenger train the the wagons are going to look very very different now we've actually come out of the building mode so everything looks a little bit more realistic uh right how's everything going down there that should all start playing through now we do actually have another another quest now, our engineers are said to be close to new developments of the steam engine. This is being fueled by the latest research and planned opening of the first foundry in our region. As a result, they might soon be able to build faster and more powerful steam locomotives. All they need are the resources to complete many years of research. Now, the time to the next stage, I'm not really sure how all of this plays in but it, it, it's saying it should be like nine years and in that time i need to invest a hundred timber and a hundred gold tokens uh optional reward awarded if you invest in the new technology will get 20 iron and improved foundry production so it's not something that we need to do we can just let it happen but if we we actually do it then it'll be pretty cool uh, so we will want to do that. Now you might be wondering, well, how do you get the tokens? Are we just going to get loads and loads and loads of uh, quests? Well, we might, yes. I'll look at those things all filling up. I approve. A little bit more. We're just waiting on a tiny bit more. In fact, let's have a look. You're not a particularly good uh, forest, honestly. You're not producing logs very fast at all. However, there are ways to produce the tokens. Now, if we have a look over here, the tool works. As you can see there, They'll take three timber to make one timber token and four coal to make one coal token. So that's how you produce the tokens yourself. Uh, over here, we're going to be giving three logs for two timber and our train is off. Marvelous. I approve. 
Now, in terms of this quest, it's going to take a little while, but uh, we are moving 28 per trip, so it'll just take us four trips and we'll be sorted. Now, at this point, we could conceivably have this one train. Uh, this is not a line you could easily run two trains on. Not with that long, long issue there. But we could, just to get a little bit of extra cash, hook up to a station over here. And I think that would be a pretty good idea, actually. Let's go ahead and build ourselves a station. Now, the station could be long and hook up to many different uh, things. And that might be great. I could make the station like this. No, the station's too long. Apparently, I can't make the station like that. It, it saw through my clever plan. Uh, but there are other options to increase your catchment area. There we go. That station will be good enough. And we want to bring this out. Oh, I'll bring it out to about there. Now, I would like to perhaps hook up like so. I think that will be uh, particularly nice. Now, the problem here is, of course, that this little line will actually become uh, a little bit con congested, let's say. So, we're going to pop down some signals just in a couple of, of spots. One there and one there. Just so that uh, if, if a train is moving along here, we don't have a crash. Because in this game, unlike Transport Fever and very much like Transportation Tycoon, you can have crashes and they suck. Uh, right. I don't know if there's any kind of... Um, any particular kind of... Uh, town standing that gets hit when when you have a crash but you do lose the locomotive and anyone that was in the locomotive go figure right so on your orders I would like you to add uh, after station one I'd like it to go down here to station seven and in fact I'm gonna move that up and it understands that that is now the new second order and automatically adjusts its course and I really really do like that I like that a lot about the game there we go. So at least when it pulls up to Paisley, it's going to have a reasonable amount of people on board, I think. Uh, which should be good. Uh, you know what? We can extend a couple of things. Extensions. Now, the way extensions work, and I think the extensions can actually put on a lot of stuff. Um, we can add platforms, apparently, just to increase the length of the station and uh, its catchment area as a result. We can add a signal box so that the station could be even longer than normal. Storage building to increase the capacity of people that could be waiting at the station. A restaurant, which will increase capacity and also income when stopping at the station, which is actually quite nice. A freight station, which will increase loading speed dramatically and capacity by a little bit. And a waiting room, which would increase the loading speed, the catchment size and the capacity a little bit. And I quite like this one. In yeah, these don't need to be um, in any particular orientation, but they do need to touch the station. Now, I'm going to pop this one down here because this is going to give us a little bit uh, of extra, extra reach. But I would actually like to extend the, the station just a tad, just so we can capture a couple more people because now it is actually quite profitable for us to do so. So if I can bring it up to there, that leaves one tile so I can put a signal there if I really want to. But we are now actually hitting the catchment on quite a lot of people there, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that one. Now down here we can do exactly the same and possibly get most of Paisley under our uh, catchment. In fact, yeah, all of Paisley under our catchment. That is marvellous, yes. Go ahead with that. There is no need for me to do it up here, as you may well imagine. Uh, we can do the same over here as well. I think we should. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, obviously, these are expensive. They're incredibly expensive things to do. A hundred money tokens, but they do give me so much more out of it. That being said, I'm not sure about the placement here. I think I might want an extra station there. So I could pop down a platform, maybe, and expand out from it, perhaps. Oh, maybe I could put down a second train. Hmm. You know what? Sure. I'm going to uh, plan for the future. And we're going to pop that one down. Right there. That is going to allow us to build the waiting room right at the back here. Like so. And we're going to reach uh, the whole next street as well. Which I think is actually pretty cool. Over here, is it really going to be that beneficial to us? I'm not sure. Maybe. Let's have a look. Currently... Yeah, actually, it'll bring most of the town 
into our uh, radius. So I'm thinking maybe we should. But first, I'm going to need to drop this. Oh, dread. I built that road prematurely, it appears. Let me clear that road then. Let's get these gone. Makes me sad. Makes me sad to waste money. But this is too useful for me. So let's drop that down. There we go. Then we can add in the waiting room. And we've got most of the town. Perfect. There we go. We're not actually going to hook that up for a little while. Because right now, we're easily managing to meet and satisfy the demand. Made some small progress now on moving the, the, the logs around. Unfortunately, it does take us quite a long time to, to get that down in. Now, is there any way that I can expand the forest? A tree nursery is going to increase. A special forest facility where growing trees are sheltered from animals and the weather. I'm willing to invest in this. Yes. There we go. It's going to expand a little bit more. I could uh, there's only one that I could add. Oh, no, actually, there's quite a few. Uh, let's expand this out. Uh, lumberjack storage, where we store our lumberjacks. Cleaning, uh, cl uh, sorry, cleaning a cleared area where the felled logs are stored. Charcoal kiln used to make charcoal by burning timber without oxygen. Oh, so this would actually allow this to produce coal. That's very nice. Storage for the forest animal food and equipment for forest management. Okay. That's actually pretty pretty interesting, I must say. Okay, so, with all of that done, I think we've uh, run out of time, actually. We've got a lovely little forest so far, I think, uh, forest, so we've got a lovely little uh, network of train stops so far. We've got a decent little place up here. In fact, actually, the station's starting to uh, get a quite a large amount of people staying there, um, or rather waiting there, but it's still not enough for us to actually add a second train to this line because our current train is doing fine as is but in the next episode i strongly suspect we are going to be trying to do something with all of this timber which is just piling up and that something is going to involve a tool uh tool works now i'm willing to bet that it's also going to involve adding maybe another station down here and then getting a line that's going to cross this mountain. That's going to be a fair undertaking, and it is going to involve it is going to involve uh, tunnels at some level. Just how much we can do with the money that we've got, I don't know, but we'll find out in the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed this one though, and we'll be joining me in the next. And as ever, do remember to leave a like if you liked and sub if you haven't. But until next time, do take care, everyone.